Situated between Tampa Bay to the east and the world-renowned Gulf Beaches to the west, the St. Petersburg, Florida area offers an abundance of options for residents and vacationers of all interests. Whether you're new to the area or vacationing for the first time, this video will help you identify some of the top activities and experiences in St. Pete. Keep watching to see our list of top things to do in St. Pete and the surrounding area. Number one on our list of top things to do in St. Pete, and probably the most obvious, is to spend a day at the beach. In fact, St. Pete Beach was just named the number one beach in the U.S. by TripAdvisor, and three other Pinellas County beaches were ranked in the top 20. Known for their soft powdery sand and calm turquoise waters, it's not hard to see why these beaches are a top U.S. tourist destination year-round. To avoid the crowds, equally beautiful but less popular beaches, such as those on Caladesi Island, offer a more secluded experience. While you can't go wrong with any of these beaches, we'd recommend watching our beach travel guides after this video to identify which of these top beaches is perfect for you. We'll be sure to put the links in the description below. We also want to mention that if you're staying downtown and are looking for closer beach options, there are two bayfront beaches that are walkable from downtown St. Pete. This leads us to number two on our list, which is to visit the bayfront parks. Each of these parks offer walking paths, along with several places to relax and enjoy the bay views. We'll mention a few of the parks closest to downtown St. Pete. Demens Landing is a great spot to relax and watch the planes take off and land at the downtown St. Pete airport. Or to watch the boats sail in and out of the marina. Just to the north and bordering each side of the pier, you'll find Straub Park. In South Straub Park, you'll find this relaxing fountain. While in North Straub Park, you'll find this giant tree that you can walk through. If you happen to be visiting during the holidays, Straub Park is also a great place to check out some of the Christmas lights. Just a little further up the bay is Vinoy Park, a great place to view the downtown St. Pete skyline, both during the day and at night. It's also a popular place for people to relax in their hammocks between two palm trees. The last park we'll mention is North Shore Park, which is a great place to lay on the beach, play beach volleyball, or explore the free Copsip Arboretum. If you enjoy the Arboretum, then you'll almost certainly enjoy number three on our list of top things to do in St. Pete, which is the Sunken Gardens. Sunken Gardens is a four-acre botanical paradise, featuring a hundred-year-old garden with over 50,000 plants and flowers from all over the world. The gardens are also home to a flock of Chilean flamingos, which were relocated to the Sunken Gardens in 2016. If you enjoy turtles, you'll also be happy to find several of them at the Sunken Gardens. While we didn't get footage of it on our visit, we were amazed at the size of the resident alligator snapping turtle, which can live up to 70 years old. The gardens also include a large, open lawn known as the Wedding Lawn, which serves as a popular wedding venue. Admission to the gardens is only $12 for adults, with annual memberships available at $50 per year. We would recommend getting to the gardens early, 
as it's easy to spend several hours here and it does close at 4.30 daily. Number four on our list of the top things to do in St. Pete is to visit the St. Pete Pier. The 26-acre Bayfront attraction offers recreation and entertainment for people of all ages and was recently rated the number two attraction in the country by USA Today. The wide concrete paths run the full length of the pier and provide a perfect route for joggers, bikers, and rollerbladers alike. The pier offers three waterfront restaurants, a rooftop tiki bar, a cafe, and a bistro. In addition to the variety of dining options, the pier also is home to the Tampa Bay Watch Discovery Center, an exhibit gallery that showcases the Tampa Bay ecosystem and combines education and fun for kids and adults. And uh, they're actually really closely related to the sea stars. They both really? have two really? feet that they can walk around on and you can see them floating out trying to grab some food. Other great options for families with kids include the Spa Beach, the Splash Pad, and the Glazer Family Playground. The pier also offers an abundance of green space to relax, enjoy a picnic, or an occasional live music performance. Perhaps the most popular of the green spaces is located under the Bending Arc. The aerial sculpture spans 424 feet, and at night it transforms into a mesmerizing work of art that constantly changes with the wind. If you want more information on planning a day trip to the pier, we'd recommend checking out our ultimate guide to the St. Pete Pier after watching this video. We'll be sure to put a link to it in the description below. Number five of the top 10 things to do in St. Pete is to check out the downtown art and museums. The most renowned of the St. Pete museums is without a doubt the Dolly. The museum's permanent collection includes over 2,000 works by Salvador Dolly, a Spanish artist known for his unique brand of surrealism and highly unusual yet technical artwork. With its unique architecture, the building is an amazing piece of art itself. Right next door to the Dolly, on St. Pete's Bayfront, you'll find the Mahaffey Theater, a concert hall and center for the performing arts. The theater, which seats over 2,000, offers state-of-the-art acoustics and hosts some of the nation's top musicians, stage productions, and comedy tours. Just a few blocks to the north, and located at the entrance to the pier, is the St. Petersburg Museum of Fine Arts, Florida's only encyclopedic art museum. The museum's collection includes over 20,000 works dating back over 5,000 years, along with world-class temporary exhibits. About a mile to the southwest, you can find the Marian Art Center and Chihuly Collection. The Marian Art Center includes an impressive temporary art gallery and also offers glass blowing demonstrations and unique workshops and classes for adults and children. Just across the street, you'll find the Chihuly Collection With its iconic 20-foot sculpture out front, it's not hard to find. The Chihuly Collection features a permanent collection of the works of Dale Chihuly, a pioneer of the studio glass movement whose large-scale installations span the globe. Another great free option for art enthusiasts 
is a self-guided mural tour. Currently, the website VisitStPeteClearwater.com identifies a growing list of nearly 100 murals in and around St. Pete. We recommend visiting this site or downloading the Pixel Sticks app to help map out your own tour. And if you don't feel like walking too much, just head to Graffiti Alley, where you'll find several murals within a span of just a couple of blocks. Next up at number six on our list is to shop local. Almost any St. Pete resident will tell you that downtown St. Pete is passionate about supporting local businesses, and the Keep St. Pete Local movement is strong. Shopping, eating, and drinking enthusiasts will have no trouble finding a variety of locally owned businesses, including those lining Central Avenue, Beach Drive, and neighboring areas. Other great options include the kiosks at the pier and recurring events such as Localtopia and the Saturday Market. If you'd like to see a bit more of what's new in the local St. Pete dining scene, we'd recommend checking out our What's New in St. Pete video. We'll make sure to include a link to that video in the description below. Number seven on our list of things to do is to rent or book a charter. Charters of all types can be found in downtown St. Pete and all along the beach towns located just to the west. We recently booked a fishing charter out of St. Pete Beach and had an amazing experience. We'll leave a link to that video in the description below in case you want to check it out. And if you're not into fishing, one of several other charter experiences might be right for you. Options include a dolphin cruise, a sunset cruise, a pirate ship cruise, or even a booze cruise on a floating tiki hut. If you're looking to get out and experience nature, then the next two might be for you. At number eight on the list of top things to do in St. Pete is Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. It offers 245 acres of protected area less than five miles south of the heart of downtown St. Pete. The preserve includes over six different ecosystems, each offering their own diverse group of native plants and wildlife. If you're looking for the unique Florida nature experience of seeing an alligator, then Boyd Hill is the place for you. And if large reptiles aren't your thing, don't worry, they can be easily avoided by keeping a healthy distance from the lake shoreline. Boyd Hill also offers an extensive trail system with miles of well-maintained trails for hikers, runners, and cyclists. The preserve also includes an aviary, which is home to several rehabilitated birds of prey, including this friendly bald eagle. With an admission price of only $3 for adults, Boyd Hill is also easy on the budget. Number nine on our list is to visit Whedon Island Preserve. Located about 10 miles northeast of downtown St. Pete and situated on the west side of Tampa Bay, Whedon Island offers over 3,000 acres of protected natural area. Like Boyd Hill, Whedon Island also offers a great opportunity for hikers with a 4.3 mile loop trail. But kayakers and paddleboarders will particularly enjoy Whedon Island for its seven mile paddling trail, which takes paddlers through a number of mangrove tunnels. Both kayaks and paddleboards are available for rent on Whedon Island. If you're like us and prefer to bring your own, you'll want to show up early, as parking along the main boat launch tends to fill up quickly. Whedon Island is free to the public, making it another incredibly budget-friendly option. If you'd like more information on planning a trip to Whedon Island or Boyd Hill, we'll be sure to leave links to those more in-depth videos in the description below. After a long day of hiking or paddling, you might be craving a cold beverage or two, and we've got you covered with number 10 on our list, which is to visit the local breweries. 
The St. Pete brewing scene is strong and still expanding, with 12 breweries located within just two miles of downtown St. Pete. With no less than 10 beers on tap, and with some offering over 30, these breweries offer something for every beer lover. Many also offer outdoor beer gardens and live music. You won't have to go hungry at these breweries either, with most either offering great local food truck options or encouraging patrons to have food delivered from local restaurants. If you'd like to see more of the St. Pete brewery scene, we'd recommend checking out our two St. Pete brew tour videos, which we'll leave links to in the description below. This wraps up our list of the top things to do in St. Pete and the surrounding area. With all the great options in the St. Pete area, we know that this list just scratches the surface. If you're familiar with St. Pete, is there something that you'd add to the list? If so, make sure to let us know. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments. If you're interested in more Florida and St. Pete area content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Thanks for watching!